Hello BSS, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here then just welcome. Hi, my name is Brenda. I do paranormal videos here on my channel so if that is something that you are interested in, please consider subscribing down below and turn on all your post notifications so you do not miss when I post another video like this one. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. I quickly have to interrupt today's video to thank Rose Forever New York for partnering with me once again for today's video. I am so excited to share with you guys their brand new collection of candles in these beautiful, elegant, luxurious containers. This is a one soy wax candle with four wicks as you can see. It is so big and beautiful and these smell absolutely divine very musky feminine energy coming off of these candles and the sleek modern look of it will fit in with any decor that you have let me tell you guys a little bit about these candles and what makes them so special this is a candle in the black collection it is 6.3 inches tall and it weighs about 4.5 pounds the burn time is 150 hours. The one that I have is the Miami Night, which is inspired by the SLS Hotel Miami Beach. The top notes are basil, almond, orange. Mid notes are musk, geranium, vanilla, and clove. And the base notes are patchouli, oak moss, cedar, and black vanilla. They come in these beautiful glass containers that are sleek and minimalist, embodying modern elegance while remaining environmentally conscious with vegan-friendly soy wax. They also have a pink collection of these with different scents that you can choose from. They are all so beautiful and they smell so divine. I absolutely love these candles. They're going to be sitting burning in my room for a very long time. So if you are interested in purchasing or checking them out, I will have their information in the description down below and you can also use my code JULY2024 to get 20% off of your next order. And thank you again to Rose Forever New York for partnering with me. I really, really appreciate you guys so, so much. And now back to the video. Hello everybody, long time no see. I hope that you guys have all been doing well. Um, as you can see by today's title, today we are going to be reading some more paranormal stories that were submitted to me by my subscribers. So I really appreciate everyone who has sent in some stories. I don't have very many left on my email. So if you guys do want to send in stories for me to read here on the channel, make sure to send them to beyondbsapparanormal at gmail.com the only place that I will read stories from. So I won't read them from the comments or from a DM on Instagram or anything like that. So make sure that you send them in to the email. That's the only place I look for them, okay? And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I hope that you all have a happy, happy Friday, that you have a good weekend, and enough yapping. I yap a lot. <laughs> let's get into it, shall we? All right, let me pull up my email as always. All right, this one has taken me a very long time to get to. It's been quite a few months. So I apologize in advance for not making videos very frequently. And so having this um, take a long time for me to get to. So let's go ahead and get into it. Story number one. And this one is sent in to me by DJ. And it says, hi, Brenda. And I'll just go by my nickname, DJ. Everyone in my family has had paranormal experiences. By the way, I enjoyed binge watching all your paranormal videos even though I'm a scaredy cat. So here are my stories. I'm not much of a writer or a storyteller so bear with me. And bear with me too because I probably end up um, fumbling a lot with my words. Story number one. This story happened to my uncle and cousin. My uncle and aunt usually wake up to go to work at 4 in the morning, and my cousin usually wakes up to drop off my aunt. In this particular morning, they were rushing because they were late. As soon as they were out the gate, they could hear this lady crying slash shouting. You know, when someone is angry that they shout to vent out their anger? It was something like that. They described this scream slash cry as if it was far away, but at the same time, it was as if it was near, and they thought that it was a crackhead. <laughs> so 
So they waited until she could pass because they were scared she might do something that could hurt them if she saw them. However, she never came, but the cries slash shouts continued until they got inside the car. I live by the waters of Pearl Harbor, by the way, and I won't say exactly where because privacy, lol. Well, I know where the Pearl Harbor is, so I get the area. <laughs> all right, I don't know if La Llorona traverses to all locations, like anything with a body of water, but maybe it could have been homegirl, who knows. All right, and then story number two. This happened in the Philippines. Where we live, it's mostly land for farming. We live all the way up northern Luzon. Well, when my cousins visit in my house, they usually go home when it's almost sundown. And keep in mind, we are a family of farmers, so we didn't really use cars when traveling around these areas. We use cars when we go to the city. And there is this road that they have to take on their way home, and they have to pass this dam. When you go down this road, there is this big tree that you see at the bottom of the dam. I don't know how to explain it, but basically this dam ain't have that much water during these times, I guess. Well, on this day, my cousin said that she saw this lady in white under the tree with a cauldron and just acting all witch-like. This particular cousin is one of the relatives that has an active third eye, or I guess like a sixth sense. I guess um, that's what the cousin has. Very interesting. Could have very well been like a real person doing some kind of uh, cliche witchcraft. <laughs> that is so scary though. I would honestly be so scared, especially if it was nighttime or like the sun was coming down. I'd be like, uh-uh, I'm taking a different route. Well, I mean, if it was like the main road, like what can you really do, right? At least they weren't by themselves. That's, that's the important part. All right, and story number three for him. This also happened in the same hometown. There is this tree that's surrounded by farm fields and a river if you walk five minutes down south. People say that elves live here and they also see a lady in white that would be sitting underneath the tree, which all of them claim to be a spirit. So everyone is scared of this tree and they try to avoid coming in contact with it. Basically, in this town, everyone is related somehow. So everyone knows that this tree is very haunted and needs to be respected if you are near it. One day, my dad and another relative went near this tree because they had to harvest and had sat down underneath the tree after working all day to eat. The next day, I got sick and was sent to the hospital because I couldn't breathe. Well, everyone was worried because when I was very young, I had to stay in the hospital. Coincidence? I think not. Everyone believed that this happened because they thought that the elves felt offended my dad had trespassed in their territory where they live, or that the witch put a curse on my dad, so they advised my dad to go and bring food and place it under the tree and ask for forgiveness. But my dad never learned because a few years later, when we went to visit my older sister's maternal grandmother, she's a half-sister, up in Cagayan, and where they live is up in the mountains. Beautiful place, I'll tell you. He had been drinking a lot, so he was drunk. They went and walked through this forest, which in Filipino culture, when you pass over wooded areas, you should respectfully say Dayu Dayu Apo or Tabi Tabi Po, which literally translates to please step aside because it is believed that supernatural beings live in the trees and stuff. Well, my dad forgot to do all of these and they had a tough time trying to get out of the forest. They believed that the forest was playing tricks with them since they would keep on walking and it would bring them to the exact same spot. Now imagine this while you're hella drunk. I would have just dropped dead there. LOL. Well, surprise, surprise. Guess who got really sick? Me. Again. Keep in mind, this was years after the first incident. They went to a albulario, a Filipino folk doctor, who heals people using herbs and traditional practices. And he asked them if they had experienced anything weird while staying there. My dad told them the story of how they got lost in the forest and the albulario told them that some locals there would also experience being lost in that forest. Sometimes they won't be found until days later. And when they do come back, they would be very sick. So, they advised that no one should go there, especially if they are alone. The al albulario and my dad went to the entrance of the forest to offer some food and pleaded that they stop targeting me. 
Thank God that was the last time it happened and I'm still alive. Oh my God. How come you get punished for something that your dad did? I know it's probably like, oh, this will hurt him more than if he got sick himself because obviously you're his kid. But it seemed like your dad was like, he was like, Psh, it's fine. Like nothing will happen because obviously he did it again. And then you end up paying for the <laughs> for it afterwards because He's like, I don't know, it's not connecting for him. Like, he probably thinks that you're just getting sick and it has nothing to do with what he's doing until this, like, folk doctor was like, yeah, it's you should probably stop doing that. And that's how he finally learned his lesson, I guess. That's so funny, but also really creepy. I've always had that fear that I would be stuck in a loop of some kind and there's, like, no exit. Like, there used to be this movie that I used to love watching about like a road where they were like traveling for christmas to their family's place and they end up taking a shortcut and then they're stuck in a time loop or or like i don't know what it is but they keep driving and driving for hours and hours and they don't know like why there's no exit it's just one long road and it keeps on going forever and that honestly scares me so much i'm like what if you get stuck in a time warp of some sort at any point in your life like crazy phenomenon and nobody believes you <laughs> like that's what i was thinking during that time when they were in the forests so scary okay now his fourth story all my relatives live in one big house typical filipino households my grandparents would use the restroom in the garage which still confuses me because they would need to unlock the front door so why would they rather go to the bathroom outside instead of using the one inside? Here's some context. There are two houses that we live in. There's the old house in the back and we just connected the newer house in the front. So she would need to walk quite a distance. She said that she woke up early in the morning and she had to go pee. As she got close to the bathroom door, the door opened by itself and these wet footsteps could be seen walking out but she couldn't see anyone the footsteps led to the backyard and i swear to god i don't know why she had the guts to follow after it but the wet footsteps just disappeared out of nowhere after passing our chico tree which was cut down years later oh my god that's something out of haunting of hill house or something because the way that would traumatize me and yeah how did she have the guts to go after it to see where it went and then watch it disappear that is so terrifying uh-uh she is braver than i for sure all right dj has a lot of stories so here is number five these happened to my grandparents these stories happened when we were already living in hawaii before they retired they would wake up very early to catch the bus and on this particular day they had to pass through a very long tunnel if you live on Oahu, you should know what I'm talking about. While they were in the tunnel, my grandma saw this teenage boy skating, which was weird because there was no way that he could just skate while in the tunnel, because there was simply no space for him unless he wanted to get hit by a car. He was keeping up with the bus as if he had tied a rope at the end of the bus and was letting the bus pull him. After getting through the tunnel, my grandma never saw the boy. This is a short one, but this tunnel has an urban legend, but that's a different story. I have to look into that. I want to know what the urban legend is. That sounds fun. I actually wanted to do another urban legends from Hawaii because if you guys know me and follow my vlog channel, I love, love, love Hawaii. So I, and you know, like the culture and just the Polynesian culture overall. So I was like, I would have a very fun time looking into some more urban legends or some more scary stories that take place on the hawaiian islands that would be very fun let me know if you guys want to see that and he has one more story on here it says i think i've already commented this story somewhere in your videos but i'll tell it again for non-readers okay so i share a room with three of my sisters so we have two bunk beds one bunk for my younger sisters and another bunk for me and my older sister this is important to the story I remember this day clearly because this was only my second encounter with the paranormal. It was after school and I usually lay in bed and try to sleep because no matter how much I sleep, I'm always, I always feel tired. I have a hard time trying to sleep so I usually scroll through social media. 
Well, my older sister walks into the room and tells me that she had cooked and wanted me to eat so that she could cook rice. She said this as she was going up to bed. And you know how bunk beds are sometimes wobbly and my sister faces the ladder when she sleeps so she has to climb up and literally jump so that her face is near the entrance and near the ladder. I don't know why she does this and I hope it ain't too complicated to understand. I get it, I get it, I picture it in my head. Anyway, as she settles down, my eyes are starting to close so I hug Hunter, my big plushie. And this is when I feel hair on my face. I knew it wasn't my hair cause I'm a boy, I have short hair. And I knew it couldn't be my sister's cause she recently got her hair cut. I opened my eyes immediately and came face to face with long blonde hair. It couldn't be my sister again since she had black hair and it wasn't this long. It was like she was resting her head on the edge of the bed with her hair falling off. So it's giving Rapunzel, okay. Hopefully this wasn't too hard to read since I rushed this and too lazy to proofread it, lol. He does, he did do a little sketch for us, very good artwork. I'll put it up here right now so you kind of get the idea of how the hair was falling or how he thinks it was falling. And maybe not his older sister, maybe the ghost that was sharing the bunk bed with him, Rapunzel, <laughs> with her hair down, all the way down. Okay, I really like those stories. Those were all really good, DJ. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. We had a lot to read through on those, and I really appreciate it. But even if you didn't proofread it, I was able to tweak it while I was reading it without having to struggle too much because sometimes the errors in some of the stories are so bad that I have to like like stare at it for a really long time and i'm like what were they trying to say here <laughs> so it wasn't as bad as i've read before so thank you so much for those i really enjoyed them let us know everybody in the comments which one was your favorite out of those okay all right scary number two is from a loyal submitter my girl lily here we go again one of her stories i hope that you guys are excited she always sends us good stories okay let's go she says nihei i don't know what that's supposed to mean but she said nihei spooky fans <laughs> let's all get comfy and excited this weekend starting with good stories i am lily and i love to write about ghostly encounters that are real to the people who experience them this one is an interesting tale shared by my reliable co-worker lori not her real name our supposed to be serious business meeting turned into a relaxing storytelling after my manager started it with a doppelganger contact, which I also submitted here. The creature featured in this story is called Encanto, like the movie. I believe this also exists in the Hispanic culture, but different meanings and spelling. In the Philippines, there are entities that reside in another realm that is abundant in all resources and full of magical energies, but can freely walk among us. Lori's grandmother allegedly had a romantic relationship with an encanto in her teens. Living at a faraway mountainous area, let's call her Maria, not her real name. Maria describes him as very tall, very handsome, great physique, and was always in white long sleeve button down shirts with a collar, white long pants, and a white pair of Chelsea boots. Oh my god, they're stylish and they're hot, okay. On top of his bright smile, sparkly eyes, and soft voluminous hair, <laughs> he was also very sweet and a total gentleman. Her infatuation towards him grew stronger as the days go by. Their meetup place was by the river, even farther than where they live, and he would walk her home when it was time to go but only up to the mango tree, where Maria's house is barely visible from. This arrangement is what they both agreed on, because she'd get beaten up if her elders knew. She only told one sibling, whom she fully trusted and was considerate of her feelings. Let's call her Eleanor. It's pouring down rain, by the way. It's like perfect weather to be reading spooky stories. It's like thunder storming outside just a little tidbit on the side i can hear it all right one day maria got the news from her parents that they are moving to the city without the older siblings only the school-aged children because they're the ones that still got a long way to go and can still get far in life 
This was bad news. She didn't know how to tell the love of her life. She eventually did, and they fought about it, until they broke up. She was devastated and inconsolable. The day came that they had to leave, and she did it with a heavy heart. Summer came, and the family went to visit the older siblings that were left in their rural home, until classes start again. Eleanor pulled Maria to the side and sat her down. She said, I have something to tell you. Don't freak out. Your ex-lover was not a human. Maria chuckled. What? Um, okay. Eleanor explained. I was walking home when I saw him under the mango tree, where he would drop you off after your little day at the river. I was watching from the distance and saw him perform some ritual and chanted some strange language, then vanished out of thin air. Maria sat there speechless. She knew her sister wasn't the prankster type. Eleanor then led her to the tree, and Maria was again in shock to see how many mangoes the tree was bearing, and a lot of them had fallen to the ground. That mango tree wasn't like that at all before she left. Eleanor sighed and said, Listen to me carefully. Calm down, okay? This is a little important. The neighbors knew about your past relationship. Turned out, they were spying on you. Because as a young girl, you shouldn't be talking to guys when it's just you two. They also have already come up with theories about the tree, despite not wit witnessing anything like I did. They just figured it out. That's why no one is taking a single thing from it. The rumors are widespread in the entire village that it's cursed. I hope you guys enjoyed listening. I can't see myself doing the same thing with other channels. I just like it here the most. I feel like we all can potentially be friends. Oh my god, Lily, yes, we're besties here. We're all besties. I absolutely loved this story because I had never heard about this, um, what do you call it? Creature? An encanto? E-N-G-K-A-N-T-O. I'd never heard about that, so the like what are they though is it like um are they just like magical like are they they look like humans obviously because you did not know that he had any kind of magic powers where he can do a little spell and disappear and apparently make this mango tree flourish too much i wonder what kind of things they can do because i've never heard of it as i said so i would like to look into it a little bit more just for my own curiosity and you guys can do that too if you guys want to look that up and see what other kind of things they do or like what kind of magic they possess very very interesting and crazy that she had a whole relationship with one of these and she had no idea she was just like this man is the entire package and that's all i need to know <laughs> she's like handsome dress as well sexy handsome that's all she needed <laughs> but that's crazy crazy thing to find out after you break up with them right okay and then we have a last submission on my email okay so after this i have zero zero submissions that i am 100 percent caught up so we are already at like a little bit over 20 minutes on the video so after going through this it's um it's gonna be a longer video a little bit longer than my usual so strap in okay let me show you a clip of how crazy it's raining outside yep yep that's the vibes that we need here absolutely 100 percent. okay let's get into the third story hello brenda you can call me by my youtube name pocket savior and I am a new subscriber, and let me say I love your channel. I listen and have listened to a lot of channels that tell scary stories, and you honestly have your own style that I love. Mm. I'll tell my stories, I guess, by age. I don't know. Thank you so much. That was the sweetest thing ever. I appreciate it. All right, story number one from him. When I was around eight or nine years old, I had to go to the hospital because I was hit hard with the flu. It was a rough time, throwing up everything and feeling so weak that I passed out right out at the entrance of the emergency room. After waking up on and off, they sent me home with some meds, hoping it would help me feel better. 
So here I am, back in my own bed, trying to rest up, when I start noticing something weird happening under the sheets near my feet. I can't. It felt like someone's hands were moving around under there, opening and closing in a creepy way. Next thing you know, I see spiders crawling everywhere. Freaking out, I jump out of bed and run screaming for my mom because now there are spiders all over the house. But she couldn't see them at all, even where, when there was this massive spider taking over a corner in her living room. Turns out, the hospital gave me medication that I happened to be allergic to, causing this whole spooky ordeal. Definitely a bizarre and unsettling experience that still gives me chills when I think about it. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on, because even if you were allergic to it, how could it ha make you hallucinate? Is that a side effect of allergies? What? Ain't no way. Ain't no way it was the medication. They, they literally try to convince you that that's why. Uh-uh. No. Okay. Second story. When I was 18, on the brink of graduation and about to enlist in the Marines, a peculiar incident occurred. One night, as I lay in bed facing the wall, a habit I had grown accustomed to, an overwhelming sense of dread consumed me. Despite the absence of any sound or visual cues, an unshakable feeling that I was being watched gripped my very being. Unable to muster the courage to turn around, tears streamed down my face as I eventually succumbed to fitful slumber while facing the wall. This unsettling experience marked the chilling departure from anything I had ever encountered before in my young life. Oh my god, what the heck could have that been? I wonder what what was causing that um that turbulence in you while you were just sitting or like laying there trying to go to sleep. That's so crazy. I mean, it, you know, it could have been paranormal. It could have been like the stress of everything kind of just settling in on you randomly and then having that extreme dread or like maybe um fear of what was coming next sometimes you are scared of the future because you don't know what it entails and you don't know if it's going to be something good or bad and sometimes it all kind of just falls on you at once out of nowhere you could not even be thinking about anything and it just comes up randomly still scary and still a very crazy thing to feel like it's very overwhelming i'm sure all right story number three upon returning from boot camp i was thrilled to reunite with my family and friends although my mom had moved in with her boyfriend i decided to stay alone in my old room at our apartment little did i know about sleep paralysis back then before it gained popularity today one night i woke up to find a dark demonic creature gnawing on my hand. Its features barely discernible against its charcoal-like face. It spoke in a guttural language as it feasted on my hand, leaving me petrified and unable to close my eyes. Startled by my awakening, the creature dropped my hand, growled at me, then fled into the closet, slamming the door shut. Finally able to move again, I quickly left the apartment and spend the night in a Home Depot parking lot in my car out of fear. What the hell? That is so scary. Oh my god. Did you have any kind of like marks on your hand or anything like that from it chewing on your hand? That is so scary. And the fact that you like described it like having it like charcoal like face, it reminded me of that creature or that demon thing from Insidious. Ugh so scary all right number four ten years later at the age of 28 i found myself working as a truck driver over the years i had witnessed a variety of things on the road from accidents and fights to encounters with strange individuals just walking along the roadside even in the quiet hours of the night like 2 a.m i would come across people walking by one particular night stands out when I was driving up to Lake Havasu, instead of my usual route from Phoenix to Vegas. The journey to Lake Havasu took me through winding mountain roads that were shrouded in darkness by the time I set out. 
Admittedly, I was driving at a rather fast pace. Upon reaching my destination and unloading my truck, I began my return journey. As I made my way back through the mountains, something caught my eye in the distance on the opposite side of the road. A woman dressed in what appeared to be vintage baby blue attire from the 60s, standing with her hand clasped together as if waiting for something. An overwhelming sense of fear washed over me at just the sight of her. An indescribable feeling that compelled me to mutter, no, no, no. What chilled me to the bone was that despite getting closer as I passed her by, her face remained concealed in darkness while everything else about her was illuminated by my truck's lights. From then on, I proceeded cautiously down the rest of the mountain road without daring to glance at my mirrors, a practice essential for monitoring one's trailer alignment, for fear of encountering her gaze once more. Reflecting on this eerie encounter later on led me to wonder if perhaps she had been a silent warning for me to slow down, maybe even saving me from harm unknowingly. The following day, when casually discussing this bizarre experience with an older fellow truck driver and questioning him about any peculiar occurrences on that same road, he smiles at me and says, So, you've seen her too, huh? That's so crazy. Uh uh. I would have passed away right there. Oh, what? Oh my god, I'm not, I didn't imagine that. <sighs> Girl. Okay. Number five. As I lay in bed, my girlfriend was already awake and engrossed in her phone, unaware that I was awake, but trapped in sleep paralysis. I found myself staring at the ceiling. Suddenly, a dark mist began seeping through the ceiling towards me, sending chills down my spine with its ominous aura. Screaming silently in my mind, I struggled to get her attention until I managed to whisper her name. Just as the black mist closed in on me, she shook me awake and released me from my paralysis. As the mist dissipated, a sense of safety washed over me. Your sleep paralysis is crazy out here. It needs to calm down. That would literally paralyze me <laughs> in fear. I would have been like, am I in sleep paralysis or am I super scared? It could have been either one or. All right, number six. This is his last one. In my latest story, I found myself alone in bed. That morning, I woke up earlier than usual to a well-lit room, positioned on the right side of the bed and far from the door. I gazed at the ceiling only to witness my bedroom door creak open. To my surprise, it was my younger sister entering with an eerie smile that seemed unnatural. Considering that she lives with our mom and is 12 years younger than me, I couldn't fathom how she could possibly be there in my house. As she made her way around the foot of my bed and towards me, I followed her movements with my eyes until she eventually reached beside me and began crawling down. Struggling to turn over as doubts filled my mind, I finally managed to do so just as she popped up next to me, yelling before fading away, allowing me to move freely once again. <laughs> oh my god. As soon as you said crawling, I was like, no, please don't do that. Don't do that, girl. Stand up. I can't even deal with that. Any imagery of somebody like crawling either up your bed or in your blanket or sitting on the blanket where you can't see them or crawling under your bed. Oh my God. It gives me the heebie-jeebies so bad. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. That is so scary. Oh my god, my heart is pounding, kind of. I'm kind of scared. Okay. Uh, I'm by myself in my house, too, so <laughs> I'm breathing hard. I feel like I ran a marathon. Oh my god. Those were so good. These stories were so good. And let me just read the last part. All right. And then he ends off saying, Brenda, thank you so much for all you do. I am an aspiring writer and am trying to get my book published as we speak. If we do, I hope you'll voice one of my characters, Anna Garcia. Please, if you have the time to read a chapter or two and let me know what you think. No pressure. You don't have to. For real. I won't be offended. Thank you. I have never been offered anything like that in my life. Ah! <laughs> wow, Pocket Savior, you really did that. And I didn't even read that last part about you being an aspiring writer. But as I was reading the stories, I was like, oh my god, there's like... 
the best written stories I've ever had in my channel, like submitted to my channel, because a lot of the times I have to proofread a lot of them to make sure I don't stumble on my words the entire video because then it takes me forever to edit out every single time that I stutter or that I'm trying to figure out what's being said. So the formatting and the grammar, top tier, and now I understand why. I'll have to respond to that proposal later <laughs> privately by email, but what an honor to even be asked that because that's insane. I never considered myself a good reader even though i'm doing this as a thing on my channel like i feel like i run out of breath so easily first of all i don't know how to do like voices or anything like that i'm not like a mr nightmare or let's read podcast or anything like that where they're really good at uh, changing up their voices and reading it very articulately i'm not good at that i don't even know how to pronounce words half the time but that is such a cool thing and I'm excited to read the the preview of the chapters of your book because that, I love reading and that's like something I like to do but it's like all in my head, you know, like reading it out loud. It's kind of a struggle for me but I like doing it at the same time. Like I like sharing these stories with everyone here on the channel even though my reading isn't the best. Like I don't have the best voice for it but oh my god that is so cool that you have a book coming out that you're getting it published and all that that's amazing thank you so so much for sending those stories in they were amazing they were all so good and crazy and the way that you were portraying your feelings and what was going on in the story like what was like while you were experiencing experiencing it was above and beyond i absolutely enjoyed those stories guys a little round of applause oh what the heck was that a little round of applause for Pocket Savior. Amazing stories. Thank you all so much for submitting your stories to the channel. I would not be able to do these videos without you guys. So a thousand times, thank you. I love hearing your stories. It's one of my favorite things to do here on the channel, especially because it's super easy. I just have to sit down and read them. And I always enjoy the stories, no matter how short or how long they are. They're always really fun to read and to learn about what kind of things you guys have gone through. Because sometimes they're like experiences that I never in my wildest dreams would have thought up or like imagined happening to me. So always a good time reading your guys' stories. So thank you once again. And that is going to be it for today's video, you guys. Make sure to leave a little book emoji in your comment that way i know who stayed all the way to the end and also before i completely end the video today's comment shout out goes to this person right here thank you so so much for leaving a nice comment i really appreciate it and it really makes my day and if you want to be the next comment shout out all you have to do is leave me a nice comment down below and that's it thank you again so much for watching hopefully i will see you in the next one don't forget to stay safe and be kind Bye bye